Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is seven sketchy things about Capricorn. And just to clarify, if you haven't watched any other ones of these, I've, this is a series and I've been going in order. When I say Capricorn, it doesn't have to be the sun sign. It can be if you have the moon in Capricorn, or if you're watching for somebody else, if they have Capricorn rising, Venus in Capricorn, Mars in Capricorn. Um, but specifically, I would say sun, moon, and maybe even Mercury, because that could be their mindset and the rising sign specifically. And the other thing that I want to say is that when I use the word sketchy, it's really more about the shadow aspects of each sign. So number one, cynical, hard boiled, pessimistic. I wrote down my list or actually, you know, typed it out. And so kind of just reading these uh, keywords. So Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is this planet that is called a task master. That is really, it's like that parent waving their finger at you and telling you, you have to really shape up or ship out maybe. <laughs> but that idea of discipline, the, dis the, the disciplinarian and that authoritarian kind of figure. But in terms of how it affects a Capricorn individual, they are always feeling like um, life is something that they have to manage uh, very carefully. And there's a sense of pessimism that can kind of um, come into things because Saturn is not like a fluffy planet. It's all about um, getting everything in order. So if you getting something into order, it means that something is chaotic right now. So they're looking at the things that are wrong. And, you know, sometimes you do have to look at life from with a critical eye. It's not all about just um, love and light. However, when a Capricorn person gets into one of these moods, for instance, if they have the moon in Capricorn, they can be discouraged if things aren't going the way that they want. And, you know, Capricorn is also a cardinal sign. So they want to take action in life. But Capricorn is an earth sign. So they tend to view life from the position of tangibility. You know, what is what is, uh, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? Everything from the five senses. But the thing is that we have to cultivate something beyond the 3D reality or else it's very easy to get pessimistic because the world can be a really, um, you know, bummer. It can be a real bummer if you don't have that spiritual perspective regarding it. Number two cheap bastards. <laughs> I had to write that one down. Stingy in all ways. And I, and I specifically wanted to include other types of stinginess besides just the material variety, because I have noticed a correlation between people who are generous with compliments and they're also generous with money and they tend to be generous physically where they're very warm and they kind of like they're touchy feely. They like to hug you and they're just affectionate, you know, and things like that. So with Capricorn, there is a certain reserve and also conservative streak in them. And it could be politically for sure, because they're very traditional, but also in terms of how they interact with material resources the motto for Capricorn is I use and Capricorns are genius for taking like if they have like an old, I don't know, uh sweater or top and just taking it and using it as a, as a dishcloth. I mean, I have, um, I've been inspired by a Capricorn woman in my own way in terms of reusing things. And that's wonderful because that helps the environment by not having a bunch of uh, stuff in the landfill. So I have no problem with that. But what we're talking about is 
when somebody is fear-based around spending money or they just, you know, sometimes it is an emotional thing where they just don't want to be generous because there's a sense of conservation, like you have to keep everything under wraps. So it's not because of any kind of, um, I don't know, unkind tendencies that they are like this. It's, it's interesting though, because the word, I think there's a, um, a synonym for stingy that is mean. And I, I think that the British tend to use that more than Americans because I think of, um, that song by the Beatles, Mean Mr. Mustard. And, uh, you know, he wasn't like not nice. He was, stingy. I think, you know, from what I took from that song. And so the thing is that it's funny how that that kind of cor- forms a correlation with the emotional side of things. Because when you tend to be more open, you tend to believe that life will support you. And that goes back to pessimism. If you think that every man, it's every man for himself in this world, it's like, you know, I could see a, a Capricorn person thinking it is a dog eat dog world, and you have to be the, the dog that's eating the other dog, you know, that they might have a cynical view, especially some Capricorns have come from low income environments where they really are climbing that ladder of success. And so that can also be what keeps them very conservative fiscally, where they remember and what it was like to not have money and they never want to be back there again. If you're dealing with a Capricorn person who is being stingy, understand that you cannot change that person. You can point out in a in a non- insulting type of way, how that holds them back and you can help them to become more free spending. If you are Capricorn and you admit that this is you, understand that there's fear around that somewhere. And it may be from how you grew up and you may feel like you don't want to ever experience that again, or it could come from conditioning from people around you who told you that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees And you can use affirmations and other types of tools to kind of flip the script, if you will, about how you view money, if you think that money is scarce. And so you have that scarcity consciousness, where it's like, I have to hold on to this you know, with every fiber of my being, because you never know what's going to happen. And if you cultivate a more hopeful outlook, and that that involves perhaps watching videos about law of attraction, uh, meditating, all these things that we do to raise our vibration, to get away from fear-based thinking, and yet you can still cultivate those frugal tendencies And actually those things can come in handy because some people actually say, I am going to be this way for X amount of time because I have a goal. I want to buy a house. I want to do something to, you know, I want to build a house, maybe a tiny house, and I want to get rid of a mortgage. I want to have all these, these, um, I want to have financial freedom. And so if you have a worthy goal, and you're doing this temporarily, that's awesome, because your ultimate uh, intention is to get away from this need to to fear the future. I'm simply talking about an everyday mindset that tends to see um, this life as full of lack, and being afraid of that potential. Okay, number three, being too serious about life. And uh, there's a saying that Capricorns are born old and they get younger as they get older. I've witnessed that with some people where you see like baby pictures, maybe not baby, but like when they were young, when they were like uh, in grade school and they look like little old men or little old women. 
And then as they get older, especially maybe after middle age, they start to kind of loosen up a little bit. And this is also that uh, Saturn influence because Saturn is a sign of old age. So the the kid who is a Saturn, <laughs> Saturn, the kid who's a Capricorn is going to be the one who is the, maybe not the teacher's pet per se, but definitely the one that adults trust and give the most responsibility to and have the most faith in to do what they say they're going to do, or, you know, they give them maybe special treatment because they know that they are advanced in that sense, that there's a, a, a real maturity with them at a young age. Sometimes when people have Capricorn rising, they're like little adults. And this can happen from an austere childhood where for some reason they had to grow up very quickly and it can run the gamut. They could have been born into wealthy families and simply were emotionally neglected, or they could have come from very um, impoverished or low income environment. A, a father may have died or, you know, I could be, I guess it could be either parent, but I'm thinking of traditionally the father being the breadwinner and the, the father dying. And then the child has to help the mother with, you know, staying alive. So they may have to go to work early. They may have to do all these things and they never get to really have that childhood. And, um, it can leave them very serious. And again, this can also inform their pessimism. So there has to be this sense of lightening up about life. And how do you do that? Um, by the way, if you do have Capricorn rising, you may even come across to people as too serious. And so they'll think that you're like a, a stick in the mud. And your sun sign, let's say your sun sign is Leo or your sun sign is Sagittarius or something. If you have Capricorn rising, people may think that you're kind of a downer. So uh, people with Capricorn rising have to really be conscious of the image that they present to others and make sure that they're not too serious, that they can laugh. I'm not talking about being fake. I'm just talking about being aware of how your presence influences other people, because we all have the power to either uplift others or drag them down. Ultimately, that's their responsibility to make sure that they are um, taking care of their own energetic field, if you will. So I'm not suggesting that it's totally the other person's fault, but still, we want to be uh, beings that of light. We want to be beings of light that other people are like, oh, thank God this person's coming and visiting me today instead of the alternative. Number four, too concerned with hierarchy, class conscious, status. And I, and I even put food chain. You know, who's at the top of the food chain? Who's at the bottom of the food chain? And I was under the impression that London or England as, you know, as a country as a whole is a Capricorn country. And uh, maybe I should have checked that out before I did this video, but that would be perfect. I think I saw that once and, and thought that that was perfect. But now I just kind of say, I think so that in case I'm wrong, I don't um, sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, this idea that there are different classes. Um, yeah, there are people that are born in a different socioeconomic level. Obviously that there are, and you can even tell when you talk to somebody, even in America where we don't have that strict class uh, situation going on that England at least did in the past. I don't know how it is right now, but, um, but you can still tell, you can tell by the, the, the way people talk, the way they carry themselves. And just in general, you can usually tell well, what, um, bracket they belong in. But it's really interesting because in my particular case, I grew up in a in a, a suburb of Chicago where there were a lot of people 
who had a lot of education, who were affluent. It was mixed, but, you know, if you want to take this area as a whole, there might be a lot of people who are, um, you know, above average and in income and stuff. And I wasn't like that. So I'm mixing in with these other people. And so what class am I in? If I'm rubbing shoulders with people who have a lot more uh, of an income than my family did, am I still lower middle class? On paper, I am. But how, you know, so it's, it's very fluid. It's not just um, black and white. And it depends, you know, how you are raised, what kind of environment. So the same thing could apply to other people. I'm sure some of you out there have uh, experienced the same thing. Maybe you grew up, uh, maybe you were born into a low income environment, and then something happened that put you into maybe your pa parents decided to move into a more wealthy community to give you a better education, but you were renting an apartment while they were living in uh, these big houses. And so you're thrust into this environment that is completely different from your economic status, and yet you become a part of that as well. And when you get older, some people may think that you, you know, <laughs> had um, – better breeding, if you want, I don't know what the, the proper term, which these are all like ridiculous terms, but that's how some people think. That's how a Capricorn person thinks. So they're like, in their mind, they're mentally putting people into these different categories. Um, obviously, these are lower expressions, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are some Capricorns out there who basically are pretty decent people, but they still you know, have a tendency to do that. And the status uh, part of it too, of like, yeah, I want to live in this town because it it's, it's symbolic of, you know, affluence, success, and blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, it's, it's really weird because I've lived, um, in a place that was considered working class and people, then they form an opinion of you about that. And then, you know, moving to a place that's considered wealthy. And then, you know, when I moved to, to, uh, the place, the town I'm living now, then people are like, Oh, wow. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm renting. I'm renting. I'm renting a flat. I'm not, you know what I mean? So the thing is that other people will judge people based on where they, where they live, you know, what their zip code is, things like that. And this is a Capricorn trait is to really put a lot of uh, value in and emphasis on status and where they are on the food chain. And the problem with that is that it's superficial, obviously, but also you can really learn a lot by living in a community that has mixed incomes and that is not just kind of um, homogenous, okay? And it's too easy to get caught in that trap of, of um, wanting status and not realizing that it can be quite dull in, in certain circumstances. And um, I also notice in terms of even like restaurants, like, you know, if I go to downtown Chicago or I go to the Gold Coast and I see all this pretentious behavior where people are going to these, you know, schmancy restaurants, I don't think I, you know, in the few times I've been in places that are not um, like chain restaurants or something like that, I find that sometimes they're ripoffs. They're um, they're trying to cater to the to the um, vanity, the ego of people that w want to feel like they're special because they can afford to to spend more money. But the actual food quality may not even be there. You could go to some uh, hood where they have like um, a lot, it's kind of rough around the edges and they have more quality like down home food that, you know, I'm talking about like cuisine, ethnic cuisine that is overall actually a better quality. But the snobbishness, 
yeah, I could have said snobbishness too, but that mentality of like, I'm special because I have money, I have some status can fool people into thinking that they're getting a better experience when really they're not. So I think there's a lot going on here. And also in terms of like, you know, whether or not a Capricorn values a person that they meet based on their pedigree, based on their uh, resume, or based on their soul, based on their goodness of character. I mean, if, you know, people with Venus and Capricorn can get caught in that trap of wanting to be with a partner because they are wealthy or they have a job that confers a certain status in society. And then they can be in a loveless marriage and trapped in that. Or, you know, the gold digger, the classic case, getting married for money and then being trapped in this loveless marriage. Number five, materialistic, greedy. Of course, that goes a little bit with um, some of the other ones that I've mentioned. Um, if you know that the devil card in the tarot is connected to the sign of Capricorn. Now, Capricorn people that I have interacted with are not spendthrifts. So they're not tacky like um, like um, a lower nature unevolved Leo person might be where they just like go to some store and just buy it out just so they can feel like they are something so they can show off. That's like what somebody else might do. For Capricorn, they typically are very good at buying things of quality that last a long time. But what I'm talking about with materialism isn't necessarily the conspicuous consumption. I'm talking about just the way too much obsession with money in general, with amassing money. You know, uh, Capricorns could be the classic hoarders, you know, not necessarily filling their house with unnecessary stuff, but hoarding money in the bank and not spending it on themselves either. So that is a form of greed and materialism as well. And just being in that mindset all the time, you know, sometimes I'm kind of a nosy person. I overhear conversations that people are, you know, having with others. And it's, it always amazes me when someone is just talking on and on about one object that they just bought or what they're going to do regarding a vacation. There's always something that involves spending money, materialism, and not about ideas, and so it's very much on the on the material the the worldly level and that's what I'm talking about when I talk about materialism it's just being obsessed with the the you know objects and things that you can buy money with number 6 too stern unyielding authoritarian so I mentioned being cynical and hard boiled, but, um, there's also this thing about like, I don't know if it would be might makes right, because that's not, I'm not talking about like, um, physical punishment or anything like that, but just this idea that again, with the hierarchy that adults are the, that there's like got to be a head a person who doles out the punishment or gives the praise and this sense of like authority, you know, worship of authority. And that goes along with the idea of hierarchies and just a, te a, a tendency to be more conservative and believing in authority. That's the Saturn influence, obviously. So a parent who's a Capricorn may be a very strict parent. And I'm kind of torn between, you know, putting that down because I believe that there's too much laxness these days in many different ways with parenting. And, you know, I'm an expert on parenting because I don't have children. So there, I'm sure there's a lot of people that say, well, you don't, you know, you have no idea about being a parent because you're not one. And I always say I don't have to be uh I don't have to be a carpenter to know when a when a a table is um broken. 
So the thing is that I am of the belief that too many adults see children as being unformed because they're young. And I believe that children have souls just like we do. And that there is no, it's not that they are becoming more and more conscious as beings. I actually believe they're more conscious when they are between the ages of zero and seven. And they can say some very wise things. They become closed off because the world t takes over with them. But you will see very young children talking about past lives and being very psychic, seeing uh, relatives who have crossed over and things like that. And you have adults that just roll their eyes and kind of tell them that they're seeing things and who are those imaginary friends that you have and trying to make them seem like they're, that they're not with it, that they don't know what's going on. And I think that many adults would be, be would be better served if they learned how to respect the wisdom of children and their psychic uh, doorway that kind of closes off and encourage it as much as possible so that it doesn't close off. Because um, that is, I think that's true. And what happens is that the parent thinks, the authoritarian adult thinks that because they are bigger and older and they've lived, you know, they, they're, they've got a job and all this stuff that they have some superiority and that, that the child has nothing to offer the parent in terms of wisdom. And the more that we can lose that ego that needs to feel superior to a being that is, you know, less ages chronologically, and the more we can humble ourselves and yet still maintain the parental role, the better. And I think that the, I think that, um, the reason that Capricorns would do that would be too strict it goes back to those other points that I, I made, you know, pessimism, the world is a dangerous place and I have to be very strict with my ch child to show him how dangerous this world is, you know, and he can't just do anything he wants. And just being serious about life and taking life too seriously, worrying too much about whether your child is going to get into the right college when they're three years old. I think that's another big one. Um, I could have put that down being too ambitious, um, about them for themselves and for others, because that can really screw up the child. Uh, and that's that status conscious again, again, you know, wanting that, wanting the outward signs of success through the job title, through the neighborhood that they live in. And uh, that is, to me, total illusion. And the higher vibration of Capricorn is very spiritual and can even renounce the world. Um, I was just watching the this movie that you that you guys might find interesting called Awake, and it was about Paramahansa Yogananda. He was born on January fifth. I don't remember exactly what year, probably in the late eighteen hundreds. But um, you know, he renounced the world at some point. And there are a lot of gurus who are born under the sign of Capricorn, Indian gurus. Um, and even somebody like Martin Luther King, who was a spiritual leader as well, even though he wasn't, um, people, some people did not, of course he was a reverend. Yeah, that's right. You know, he was a reverend. So he was in that line of work too, but people see him more as a political figure, I think these days. But but that's the highly evolved version of Capricorn, where they are interested in ascension, but not just so that they can get their ego stroked about like, oh, I'm so successful. They're doing it for the dignity of mankind and the dignity of our souls. And then the last one is too cold. And I meant... Um, too emotionally barren. 
And all earth signs, as well as all air signs, are going to be detached in their own way. For earth signs, they just don't see emotions as rational, as practical. Emotions get in the way of accomplishing things. And I totally agree with that. I think that when people are too indulgent of their emotions, that they tend to get, you know, they, they hold themselves back in a lot of ways and they create unnecessary drama. Even fire signs can, can create this drama because they're trying to live in this exalted state, but it's like a, an emotional state. For me, as a Sagittarian, as a fire sign that has a lot of earth, including Capricorn, Mars and Capricorn, I don't listen to music um, as much as I used to, unless it's classical or something that is really mellow and maybe doesn't even have words. Because sometimes when I hear those songs and they get your heart chakra pumping, you know, it's just too much. It's like it, it puts you in that maudlin, you know, overly sentimental state of mind. And I don't like that. I feel manipulated. And yeah, sometimes it's fun to get into that kind of a mood. And then you're just like crying or you're, you know, remembering the past, remembering your adolescence. It's, it's fun, but I don't indulge in it. Okay. And some people still do, you know, and they just want to be in that dra dramatic state of mind all the time. And so I can totally get that. But we're talking about being very closed off emotionally sometimes not being expressive, so being rather somber and maybe not being affectionate, you know, not being touchy-feely. Obviously, this is not going to be for all Capricorns. You may have the moon in Leo and you may be very expressive and you may be very warm. So that's not what I'm talking about. But if you're like the classic Capricorn, especially if you have inner planets and points in Aquarius, which is a sign right next to you that can make you super duper detached. And that just is, it's problematic on the level because other people may sense that you don't really have the, the ability to love or the ability to um, empathize with others. And that can be problematic in terms of them trusting you emotionally and just even um, being able to connect with you emotionally. So you have to see where is this coming from? You know, what, am, what do I tell myself about life where I need to be this cynical and this cold? You know, am I protecting myself? That could definitely be what is going on with Capricorn. So anyway, I hope that, um, you guys enjoyed this. I think I tried to be sympathetic to Capricorns. Maybe as I do uh, this series, I'm becoming more and more sympathetic to some of the shadow aspects. Who knows? Okay. If you like this kind of um, interpretation, please check out my private readings. The link is below. Take care. Bye.